Hey guys, CJ here, and welcome back to another modding tutorial. In this episode, what we're going to be doing is actually beginning work on what I would like to be the main point of this mod, a generator block that generates power. In this episode, all we're going to do is set up the block and create a little bit of a GUI. So, let's begin. First things first, I'm actually going to create a new block. I'm gonna call this block generator, using the right keyboard, of course, generator. Now we're going to register this. I'm just gonna call it generator, block generator. Well, I'll just copy generator because I don't feel like typing it again. It's a, it's a big boy word. So we're going to create a new block generator class. And this is going to extends block container. Now you notice this is a little different. Uh, the container is basically something that can hold items and to have a GUI. So if you go ahead and add your constructor and your tile entity, I'm actually gonna make this public. Since it already has a tile entity thing, it's gonna force you to do that. Now, I'm not gonna require material. Once again, I'm just gonna say it's material.iron. So I'm gonna say this.set hardness. Set that to 2.0F. This dot set resistance, it's resistance to explosions. I set that to 2.0. I'm going to set the creative tab to underscore tabs, tab blocks. Okay, so before we do anything else for this, we're going to want to create our block states and models and texture. So I'm just gonna create the block model block generator dot JSON. Place everything tutorial to the generator. I'm also going to give it a name tutorial generator block generator and finally we give it a texture okay so back in the block model I'm gonna do something a little similar to how you would set up a furnace instead of your parent being cue ball you want it to be orientable we'll find out if I spelled that right later then we have a top front and side texture So I'm going to say this is block generator, top, side, and front. And so now, we'll need three different textures for these. Luckily, I just so happen to have three nice textures laying around. So we just drop these <coughs> into our textures. You can see they're just lighter versions of the furnace because I was lazy. I'll leave those in the description so you can download them. Now we're going to test to see if the block actually exists. Okay, I see an error, malform JSON, and I can see what the problem is. We didn't put commas. Well, you may have, but I didn't. So let's try this again. Okay, there we go, no errors in the console. So, let's test. Okay, we go into our creative tab, and look at this. We have our tutorial generator. Now you'll notice this is, uh, this is not what you were looking for most likely. Okay, it took me a few seconds to realize what happened, but the problem is we don't actually have it creating a tile entity. So, let's make it. So in our tiles class, I'm just going to have it register a new, <laughs> a new tile entity. I'm going to call this tile entity generator on the wrong keyboard. And tile entity generate ho. Okay, we're going to create this class and it's going to extend tile entity. Okay, there we go. So in block generator, we're just going to return a new tile entity generator. Now let's try it and see if we are... Yeah, it's still not working. Okay, one last thing we're going to have to do is tell the game how to render this block. So we're going to say public enum block render type get render type i block state state and we're going to return enum block render type dot model. So this just tells it to render from the model rather than from the tessellation that we would do in tile entity, which basically means instead of rendering in Java, we render using JSON. And we place it, and you can see it's actually rendering. Now, it's not actually facing towards us. And to do that, that's a lot of work, so we'll do that at a later date because I don't feel like doing that now. Um, but now that it's rendering, we can actually get into the less lame stuff. 
So what we're going to do now is let's add the GUI. So I'm going to open up our block that has our public Boolean unactivated and such. And we're just going to return true. So what do we want to do? We want to open a GUI, but we haven't created that GUI yet. So let's do that too. So back in our GUI package, I'm going to have GUI generator. Now later on, this is going to be different and we're going to have to change it. But right now I just want to get it written to show you basically what it would look like. So this is going to extends GUI container. So we have our constructor and we have our draw GUI uh, background layer. And this is actually going to require a container. So we're going to have to do that. So let's create a package container. I'm going to call this container generator. And this is going to extends container from net.minecraft at inventory. Okay, so basically we're just, this, this is an unimplemented method you can just add. But right now I'm just going to say yes, the player can interact with it. This is just like the most basic container setup you can get. So inside of here, we're going to have our draw GUI container background layer. Now inside of here, we're going to set the color for OpenGL. And this is just going to be white with full alpha. Now we want to get the MC Texture Manager. We're going to bind the texture to our new resource location. And this is going to be our mod ID colon uh, textures slash GUI slash container slash generator. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> so we import resource location. Now let's go ahead and get this file. So we're going to create a new package based on textures. It's going to be inside of GUI.container. Luckily, once again, I already have a texture ready. And this will also be available in the description to download. Now I'm actually quite proud of this, even though to get it is really easy. <clears throat> All you do is invert the normal furnace GUI, and then add burp right there. And then on the side, I just painted around this in pink to show you that this outside area is going to be empty, but it has to be here. And the image has to be 256 by 256 pixels, even if the GUI itself on the inside is less than that. For example, this one right here, is 175 by 165, I believe, if I'm correct. 175 by 165, yes. And so finally, we have to actually draw the texture. So it's this dot draw textured modal rect. This dot GUI left. This dot GUI top. Zero, zero. This dot X size this dot y size. So back in here, you'll remember I said it was 175 by 165. So I'm going to say this dot x size equals 175. This dot y size equals 165. Okay, so now let's open this GUI. So in our, actually we'll want to go to our GUI handler. And in here, we're going, oop, we have to give it a GUI ID. So I'm going to say it's public static final int id equals 1, because 1 follows 0. Else, if gui generator dot id equals id, then return new gui generator. Once again, this is going to have to be more uh, advanced, but I'm just going to pass a blank container through. So now time to open the GUI. So we say PLY dot open GUI tutorial mod dot instance uh, GUI generator dot ID the world is W the XYZ. And these are of course going to have to be integers. Oops. You have to put the integers on the right variables. Okay, there we go. So let's try this. Okay, so let's get our generator and place it down. And here we go. We can see our amazing little GUI here. 
Now, I think if you look closely down here, we are getting cut off by one pixel. This is an easy solution. Just go 176, 166. Okay, so there we go. Now we can actually see the edges. And so that's, I think, as far as I would like to go in this tutorial. Next tutorial, we might actually get the slots in here. So when you hover over it, it acts like an actual GUI. And, you know, maybe I should have done this a while ago. There we go. So next tutorial, probably get some items able to actually come into here and have them saved if you, like, log out and log back in. All that fun stuff. Um, so thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you enjoy my content, of course, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.